Okay, let's jump right into this one. Uh, I'm not going to watch the opening cinematic because it's more or less just a collection of the different things we're going to see later on in the game. Final Fantasy IX, made in the 2000s by Square for the original PlayStation, one of the last games that, actually I think this was, the last game that I had bought new uh, at retail from, for the original PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, okay. Before I get started, I should just make note that I've been looking for a point in which I was going to start playing this game for about two years now, I think it was. Originally, I ran into the problem of I had lost the discs that I had had. I didn't know where they are. I still don't know where they are. What I had ended up doing, though, is, strangely enough, going and rebuying the game. And then not even bothering to make a video out of it. I just started playing through the game. And I got up to somewhere around the mid part of the second disc when I stopped and thought, You know what? Make videos out of this. So here I am starting up again, although I'm playing it on the emulator now on my PlayStation. No, um, my PlayStation emulator on my PC. Also, I'll make note that I, I may sound a little messed up right now because I'm coming off of um, influenza. So, hopefully my voice as I'm talking more and more will clear up a bit. That seems to be the way it's working for me lately. So, uh, let's get right into this. See some of the awesomeness that is Final Fantasy IX. Okay, you can't really see it too well right now. We'll make note that the... Uh, my analog stick is a little messed up. I'll have to control with the D-pad for now. The... Oh yeah, thanks for the direction there. It's a little hard to see right now. But, uh... Ooh, a potion. This game works very much like the other Final Fantasy games of its era for the PlayStation, meaning... 3D character models over on a static 2D background, allowing for greater visual fidelity. And I'd say they actually pulled this off very well, even better than they did in 7 and 8 in this game. They really pulled out all the stops when it came to 
making this game look pretty. Our main character, Zidane. Or Zidane, I think it's Zidane though. Boss battle time. This will be the first boss battle that we have in this game. The first battle we have in this game. Now we have Zadon, Sina, Marcus, and Blank. We're going to be able to defeat this guy pretty easily, of course. Let's see if he has anything to steal. Oh, he has a potion. Have anything else? Bosses, I think, in this game tend to have a few different things you can steal. What? Oh, jeez, tell me the space bar isn't bound to the thing. Uh, okay. Okay, we're stealing some good stuff from this guy. Anything else? Get some. <laughs> Let's keep stealing, fool! <laughs> the active time battle that you see in this game is similar to what we've seen in uh, the trip. <laughs> Similar to what you've seen in the other Final Fantasy games, there's quite a number of games in the series. But the departure for this game from what the previous two is a return to having four characters in your party at a time, as opposed to simply the max build maximum of three that we had seen in seven and eight. Mage Masher, there we go. Okay, he doesn't have anything. Let's kick his ass now. It's a uh as a result, though, and you'll not, you'll really see this later on in the game, I'll point it out once it starts becoming a thing again. Because you have four members of your party instead of three, they slow the pace of the battle down a little bit. Your active time gauges charging a little bit slower than they did in 7 and 8. As a result, when you have fewer than four party members, battles tend to drag. And, okay, there we go. Okay, so that was our boss. <laughs> now you do have some dialogue options you can choose, but it doesn't really affect the uh, plot in any way. So I'm just going to choose the wrong one. 